Hey, what's up guys? This is Johan and on this video we'll be doing a update of the entire system. I'll be just behind the camera today, um, not in front of the camera, just showing you guys what's going on with my reef and my entire um, fish system. Um, anyway, so let's get into this little update. Alright guys, so starting right here on the left side of my tank, um, as you guys can see, I do have a, if you guys were following me on um, Instagram, you'll see that I had a build day yesterday and today, two build days, and I decided to make a refugium. Um, I think my fish stock is getting a little bit out of hand, um, and my nitrates are starting to show. I've always had high nitrates. But um, it's time to get to the point where a water change is not enough to um, get rid of it. And I don't have enough space underneath the sump right here, so I decided to put a refugium on. I've always wanted to put a refugium, and it's always a lot um, easier to clean and maintain than some of the other um, methods like an algae scrubber or a chitter reactor. So I went ahead and uh, built me a refugium, a stand, and drilled the tank. So it's just simple, um, one section here, overflow section over there, move this little crate, and then goes into a bulkhead. Bulkhead comes down on this side, and then comes down and then goes into the filter flush section. Um, I am temporary, temporarily running it into the mechanical filtration area, just temporarily um, until I get some extra um, parts I didn't feel like running back and forth to the um, to the home my local Home Depot I just thought I had enough pieces so this went ahead did like this and then later on I'll add extension to go over near the return section but for now this is gonna be okay because I don't have really have a large population of pods in the refugium um, the main reason I'm getting the refugium is for nutrient export not for pod growth but it since it's a byproduct of a refugium it'll be nice to have then going on into the reef, everything is doing nice. Fish are all okay except for my one hippo tang um, that seems to be hiding, and he's been doing this all day long. Um, hasn't eaten yet, but it comes out, and uh, there you go. You see him; he flops around every now and then under there, and he comes out, stretches, and then goes back in. He's been doing that all day long, so I'm not sure what's going on with him. Um, Next thing is, uh, so only corals I have in here for now, uh, this is easy to keep um, mushrooms, I have a rock of mushrooms over here, lights off so they're closed up, I have one small frag of that, inc that um, plate in Monty, that's over here, it's basically all the way dead and then it started to come back at the tips, if you notice right there at the bottom, that tip is bright orange so that makes me know it's time to grow and I did put it back in here just for a um, test coral because all my hard corals all my SPS at least they basically died back so I put it in here as a test piece and a lot of the coral that's alive died and I thought well maybe whatever is going on in my tank is not um, properly taken care of yet so but the tips are coming starting to be pretty bright orange so Hopefully it starts to encrust and um, rain crust and then grow. Then I have a small frag of Monty right here. Um, that's doing that actually completely died except for that little piece of orange that's there. So I put it in this tank just to see if the tank is um, rebounding just like the other frag and it's doing awesome. So oh, it's starting to starting to grow with um, polyps. And then here there is a two orange frags one there one there not frags but um, there's a large frag that stretched in between these two and it started to die and I took it out moved it into the nano and those two were there I didn't even know it was there because the entire core was actually brown and dead dying so those two that stayed there on the rock are they're starting to get the color back so they're nice and bright and orange then my torch a little bit closed up right now i think it just was just fin finished feeding um i'm not sure if anybody else feeds their torch but my torch is like when i feed them they just grab the tentacles in and grab the food so 
Um, I think I was feeding some mice and it just grabbed some. Harmers are doing fine except for this one. I accidentally siphoned out one of the heads. So this little head right here is still alive, surprisingly, but um, I sucked out a lot of polyps. I wasn't paying attention. Talking to my wife, turned around and there was a coral in the siphon head. So, but the other two heads on that are doing fine. And that I remember that started with one little frag I took off. I broke off from the main um, colony, was in the nano, and then I took it out in the nano when I was restarting the nano, and now it has three heads. So, awesome. So that's the 75 gallon top. Um, you see the filtration system. There's no uh, filter floss. Then I have a tower of um, some pellets. It's like. Um, what do you call these pellets? Oh, I can't get to that because that new thing. But it's like um, these um, clay pellets that you use for um, you use it for um, like in agriculture to grow plants out of soil, and it's just in there. And I've been running that for the past six, seven months, and it's just that we I only put it in there to silence this and not have um, bio balls. I wanted something else besides bio balls because. Bad balls increase my nitrous a little bit higher, and I wanted some a little bit smaller that could at least reduce the nitrous. They've been working fine, um, but I need that's what I did been working fine for what I wanted them to. Um, a protein skimmer always kicking butt. I need to clean it. Um, algae scrubber. Uh, this one is always keeping kicking butt. Oh, another thing I do it too. I put some of these lights here so I could actually see what I'm doing. Oh, let me take this filter off. Yeah, there we go. So looks a little bit more white. Um, the algae scrubber is kicking butt. It's about time to change it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's about a good two or three pounds of algae that's growing. So it's time to clean this. Then I'll be putting another algae reactor on here. I mean, um, <coughs> turf scrub on here because it has been... Um, I feel like I've been starting to overstock my uh, reef tank and nitrates are getting out of hand. Water changes aren't enough. Um, at least I can't do a big enough water change. I'll have to do two 18 gallon water changes and that'll be too much for me um, as far as like a water bill is concerned. So I decided why not um, increase my filtration. So in between my 18 gallon water changes that I do, 18 to 20 gallon water changes that I do, that um, the filtration should handle it. I did have the cheetah reactors on here, but it wasn't working out the way I did, and then I accidentally damaged one of the wires that was here and turned off both cheetah reactor. Both cheetah reactors actually stayed off for a week, uh, well, a week and a half, and most of the cheetah died off. So I just took them offline um, and I reused some of the cheetah in the nano and in this. Um, I had it stored in a five gallon bucket so I could reuse it. So now this is just GFO and um, carbon I've been using just to clear out the excess. It's been running for about a week and I just took it offline. I'm going to reset it and put it back on in two weeks or so. So that's that. Let's go on to the Nano, which has been, as far as coral is concerned, has been kicking butt and makes me feel like I know what I'm doing as a reef base. So let me put this filter back on. Alright, so um, as you guys can see, corals are doing fine. And if you guys remember my last update where I did the Rico's Nano Tank Challenge, where I had a lot of um, dino, flagell dino, dino flagellants <laughs> going on in my tank, um, it's a, it has a bit died back a bit. Um, I haven't really done anything just yet, um, I haven't even done a weather change. I just um, let it run because um, I was busy doing other things. So I just said, let me let it run and then do some more research before I make any drastic changes. And so far, it looks like it has disappeared. Um, even under the white lights, I don't see it. So maybe the system is stabilizing. Um, so maybe it's just um, because I did remove the chili reactor on this system. And that was a big dramatic change with the main filtration getting off. And then I started to do water changes to supplement the... Um, removal of the cheetah reactor so maybe it was such a drastic change um, on the system that it's causing problems so but for the most part the corals are kicking butt like look at this forest fire digitata 
I remember when I first got it, it was a little stick and then it was dying in the main display. I put it in here and it has just been encrusting the rocks. But this camera just doesn't want to focus. <laughs> so, encrusting this one as well. This piece of Montepora. And the, all these Montes are starting to plate. You can see that little white edge right there. Right along there, the white edge. And all of these have the white edge, my green Montes. These and then this. Uh, only coral that hasn't been doing fine is my blue Sympodium coral. I had a frag right there and I had a uh, frag in the back as well. So I had a frag right there where they see that white spot and then another one back there. And now they just basically died off and a piece is right here and it just fell off. So I'm not sure what's up with that. That's the only coral um, that just died back because it did the same thing in the main display and in the in the nano about the same time so I'm not sure if it has something to do with heat because um, it is summertime but I guess my my tank is at about 80 degrees right now and they stay 80 degrees during the um, summertime so I'm not sure what's caused that core to die off but um, that's the only one I think that's off in any of these tanks well yeah both tanks at the same time and then uh, the little guy is still, you know, hiding. He came out today. He did one lap of the tank. Um, he tried to eat something, and he's back in there. He's been hiding for the past, let's say, three, four hours. Um, just here, chilling. He comes out when he sees me, but he's been hiding for the most part. All right, so that's the tank. Now, um, there is one other fish I want to show you guys. Uh, I'm not sure how well it will pick up because it is dark. And that is my Queen Angel. The only people that have seen this, um, if you watched the replay of the live stream I did, or if you won my live stream, that time I live streamed a few weeks ago, um, then you would have seen my Queen Angel. But here it is. It is a very beautiful fish and very interactive like he'll run away come up investigate very inquisitive fish i mean it's, it's not coming up right now because it's like what is that black thing in your hand it's my camera buddy <laughs> you can come up yeah but this fish has been like that since day one yeah. he has been like this since day one and i am he's done with his quarantine I just haven't um, put him in the main display because um, I am working on a video. Um, it's for fish aggression, so that should be the next video that's coming up. Um, it should be coming up uh, on Wednesday, and then after I'll be adding him in um, or her. I'm not sure, but this is a beautiful fish. Um, this is actually one of my dream fishes, and I am totally head over heels for this fish. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful fish. Um, the, one of the main reasons I got into this hobby was because of this fish and uh, my Emperor Angel. Remember when I was snorkeling um, back home, I that was a really large Queen Angel came up to me, and I was just surprised that a fish would come up and interact with me in the water. So, um, yeah, so. I finally have one of my dream fishes and this one unlike any other fish I've had is very interactive um, even at the store when I got him he would look at me and come up and wave his uh, fins and this is the most expensive fish I've bought I have an, um, price was about a hundred dollars and for this fish at this size he's about four and a half inches hundred dollars is not a lot uh, that's actually pretty good and I got him from um, Nemo's Aquarium, so pretty um, reasonable price for a fish. I think I would any other place I'd pay about two hundred dollars for this fish. But um, even from day one, this fish has been very interactive. I've been driving the car. I put a little clip in when I was in the car driving. Uh, he was just all up looking at me, f flapping his fin. So my LFS, and I got me something that I've always wanted to get. That's right. Now that little guy has been eyeballing me from the time I walked into the store 
even now he's in a bag in my passenger seat and he's just eyeballing me. Every other fish I've gotten has just been sitting in the back, um, just sitting, chilling, not doing anything. This guy decides, oh, he wants me. After quarantine, just a 30 gallon, um, a 30 gallon breeder, so it's about 36 gallons in total. Um, hang on back filter. Um, no mechanical filtration in this at all. Uh, I do a weekly water change on this just to remove any of the his feces that's in there or any ammonia. So that's the um, quarantine system. And then, so the last thing I did was I created a breeder box. If you guys are following me on Instagram, you'll see this. Just acrylic um, right here with egg crate. And the main purpose of this is just for the queen angel when I put him in. I want the emperor angel to see to see him. So whatever fights they're going to have, I want that to be done so they could see it. Um, see each other, interact with each other. Um, I actually want to put the queen angel directly into the main display and don't put out... Um, put him in the acclimation box just to see how he's going to act because that queen angel like i say it's very interactive it's a very aggressive eater it doesn't really give a fish about anybody else it just does what it wants to so um but it is my dream fish and i don't want it to be killed um as soon as it gets in so once that um once i'm done with uh, the next video that will be the next video that's been added in That'll be the next fish that's be adding in, um, hopefully Friday or next week Monday. Anyways, guys, that wraps. All right, guys, so I'm just jumping in here. Um, another update for this update about the blue hippo tang. Um, it was actually right here. Um, it is currently out of the system, uh, at least the main display. It's in my refugium, my temporary refugium. Oh, it's in my refugium temporarily because um it has gotten severely worse if you guys will follow me on instagram you'll see um all the pictures and stuff i posted a few pictures of what he looks like um but i've also lost uh two other fish and it might be three because um well it's actually it might be four because i don't see the cleaner ass anywhere um it's not velvet as far as i can tell um if you guys notice, it looks a little green because I have some rally treating right now. But the reason I don't think it's um, velvet is because there's no powdery sub substance in any of the fish. All the fish act act normal, and then out of nowhere, they just start, and it seems like they hit the, hit the head into the glass, and then it all goes downhill from there. So the cleaner ass is missing. It was out yesterday. I don't know where it went. Um, Lomo Blenny passed, um, Silphin Tang, the big Silphin Tang, um, that one passed, and then even in the Nano, the small Silphin Tang is dead. Um, so I am losing fish, it seems, almost every day. Uh, I just happened to be home today and saw what was going on. Um, and then in here, Right now, uh, the hippo tang is in here, and as you can see, this thing is shaking uh, because I have it in here. This is just a, basically a rubber pad and a egg crate and a magnet holding it inside, so this just stabilizes her because she was swimming erratically, bumping into stuff. Um, she was in the main display for a few days. Um, like I showed you guys, she was just in there and hiding in, in, in between the rocks but every now and then she would just dart out and jump out of the tank or at least jump out of the water uh, this morning I found her on top of the rocks right here right on the top of this the only dry part she was just laid up here so I took her out um, I want to put her in a quarantine but I can't because the queen angel is down there and that fish is, is, is in its own separate system. Um, so whatever is affecting these two systems is not affecting that system because I didn't want to bring anything from the quarantine into the main display of the Nano. And so something is in here now. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It's not any visible parasite. Um, there's 
no spots. There's none. The, I did the water, fresh water dip on all the dead fish, just to see if it was flux. Um, I tested the power again to see if there's any um, electrical feedback, any, if I was getting shocked, I, I actually cut myself just to dip my hand in the water, just to see if I get a little shock. Um, I'm not getting that either. Um, this is just one of those baffling things where fish are dying and um, I don't know. Because it says no disease, it doesn't look like the fish, the slime coats aren't falling off. Like usually, um, ick or something, you would see the spots or velvet, you'll see that um, the coating of dust, fine sugar dust on the fish. You don't see that. All the other fish are acting normally, but who's to know? Um, so, um, I was, when I, I went to my LFS today, um, um, shout out to the guys at the fish store. They were closed today. Um, I just swung by up there and nobody was there. I didn't realize I went to the back just to check. And one of the guys was closing up and leaving and I asked him, can you um, sell me something? I know you guys aren't over today and he sold me the rally. So I don't know if the rally is going to work, but um, I just went ahead and put it in because I know that treats velvet. I don't see any signs of velvet, but what the heck. Um, so what I am seeing... Um, like I say, the fish are swimming normally, and then they dart like they're getting shocked by electricity or something. And then par paralysis sets in, so it's like they can't swim. Um, but I only saw that with the two fish, the one in the nano, and then the um, and then the and then Dory over here. Um, so it's like. They started not eating, then they started swimming less, and then they just started um, not swimming at all, like they have some kind of sh seizure. Uh, um, anyways, um, I don't know. <laughs> anyways, back to the rest of the update. Alright guys, that pretty much does it for this video. If you like it, go ahead and hit the like button down below, and if you have not been subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.